Hello there, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So on this video, we're going to talk about Excel settings, save your time, and improve your Excel workflow. So I have 10 tips and tricks for you and a bonus at the very end, so please stay until the end of the video. Let's start over with the first technique here. Let me just do it in just a little bit. Now everyone knows if you type in here January, like that, and then you scroll it down, you get get this list right there pretty easy pretty simple now that might be magic or that might be a settings inside excel let's look into it so for this one i'm going to file go to options and once you're in options right there go to advanced at the very lower part very bottom part people should click on edit custom list right now we have this option that has this sections right here for example sunday um, Sunday for the full word, January, February for the full word. We also have January and February. You can also create your custom list by clicking this one, new list. Enter your list right here. Or what I like to do is basically click on this option and select my list. Easy as that. Click on enter. Now I'm going to have that list. Click on import perfectly right there. Click OK. Click OK for that one. And now every time i type in regions and then drag this down i'm gonna have this list right there i can also drag it here like so just make sure the spelling is correct of course drag it like so and drop it easy as that so you can create anything here anything you want for your list and it's solely gonna depend on your perspective all right now for tip number two or feature number three is this one right here you'll notice this part or this um line right here broken line this always appears when you're trying to print a document. So to print a document, go to File, click on Print right there, or simply clicking Control P. Again, guys, the shortcut for that one would be Control plus P. All right. So let me just go manually, go to Print, and you have this Print Preview. Every time you enable this preview, you're gonna have the dotted lines from earlier. So how to enable and disable those lines right there? Go to File, go to Options. And then look for advanced. Now carefully look for it slowly, but surely of course. We're looking for the one that says display options for this worksheet. The one that says page breaks. So make sure that's going to be in tick. And then a little tip for you guys since you have multiple sheets. Such like this example I have I think 12 or 13 sheets. You can make sure you have specific settings regarding each sheets. That's going to be depending on your perspective. Click OK. And that page break will never return even though you click on print preview. Alright? Now right now for example, or feature number 3. As you can see right here, I have a table, right? Sometimes we're seeing these grid lines and personally, I do not like them. So there are two ways to disable this one. Go to view and then remove grid lines. Should like that one. However, you're still gonna see those lines right there that are not being used. So how to properly remove this? Go to file. Go to options and then again from advanced from the one earlier slowly scroll down and look for the one that says show grid lines again this is applicable for depending on your sheets take note about that one one more thing you can change this one to another color i'm gonna go for bright orange color click ok and wait for it to show up and there we have it just make sure if you're choosing a color of course you need to enable your grid lines easy as that now, for example, or feature number four, you can see a blank page here. I'm just going to enter for this one. Hello, something like that, just for the sake of the discussion. And for this one, if you click on Control S, again, guys, that will be Control S, right? If I click on Control S right there, this document will be saved automatically. And then if I click on Control O, give me a second here. Like so, let me just zoom this one just a little bit so you guys can properly see it. Perfectly right there. So, if I click on Control O now this option will show up this is what you call a backroom you can click browse there to save or look for document you want to save your file but there is a workaround there to of course um bypass that tedious and extra step so rather than clicking ctrl s clicking on ctrl o how about you click on f12 because if i click on f12 right now it will give me the option to save the document as save as making sure you have so much time so much file type to choose from next up you also have control f12 now let me try that one right there sorry that's gonna be f12 perfect so 
that will be Control F12. That's gonna give me an option to open a new location. That's gonna be different, right? F12 is save as. Control F12 is saving this one into a new location, creating a folder for it. But of course, if you prefer the Control S and Control O from earlier, go to File right here, go to Options, and click on Save. Now there is an option here that don't show the backstage when opening or saving files with the keyboard shortcuts. Click OK so whenever we click on Control Save for this one, this will now be automatically saved without opening that backstage. Same goes with Control O. It's not gonna open that backstage but opening a new Window Explorer view. Take note about that one. Now you saw me opening the option tab very frequently, right? So the shortcut for that one is gonna be Alt and then F and then letter T. Again, that will be Alt F T. Opening up the settings for you guys. Another option is on this one on the quick access. Click on more commands for this one. Looking on the quick access tab, there should be a settings option for this one. So this is going to be the Excel option again, guys. So click on this one. Make sure you click on file tab. And under here, look for the one that says options. So we're just going to add the options right there. Click on add. Click on OK. Now, once you successfully add that option, click this button right there. And every time you click it, you're going to open that Excel option. You can now open this one very frequently without going to file options and go there. Just by one clicking, you can have that option right here. For the next example for this one, this is going to be for beginners. Some of the formulas look like this, right? The quantity, the price, down right there, and easy as that. So we can turn this off, making sure it's not overwhelming especially for beginners and newbies in Excel. So what you want to do is go to this Excel formula, um, Excel options. Once you're here, go to formula. Click this option that says use table names in formula. Click OK. So moving forward, you won't have this one. Instead, every time you click a formula like so, you're going to have the letters, much like this one right here. So this one for the column one is exactly the same as this one for the total cost. Now, feature number six is going to be this one. It's going to be a pivot table. Now, some people doesn't like seeing this part right there. It's pretty overwhelming. So what you can do here is go to design. You can change the report layout. For example, you want it in tabular form. You want it in another outline form right there. That's going to be depending on your own design here or your own perspective, right? So some people like this one, tabular form, it works best for them. Now, instead of doing this manually, of course, we can do this and change it in the settings so once on here click on data click on add the default layout and once you're here you can select it properly now once we're here we're going to have so much options to work with for example moving forward under subtotals you want it in tabular form on the top of the group for layout you want it tabular you can also insert blank line right there but if you click this one right here you have so much options here for example you can merge you can error values show something like that and click on ok for that one click ok and click OK one more time, and then your tabular form should look like this one. Now, if you want to insert a new pivot table, for example, for this one, if I click on insert with that one, click pivot table, and then click on OK. So every time you now create a sheet for that one, it will follow the one you created earlier. Moving forward, you're going to have that filter. Easy as that. Right now, it's going to be in tabular form. It's not overwhelming. It's pretty optional. Now for the next feature, a tip for you is if you click on this pivot table and go for dates. For example, if you go on date and place it under row, it will give you the option to make sure or code it or group it by year already. Quarterly, and then sometimes it's going to be quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three. So if I remove everything first for this one, you can adjust this to remove it moving forward. Of course, go to settings, go to date for this one or data for this. Once you're in data, make sure you click on Disable Automatic Grouping of Date and Time Columns in Pivot Tables. Now, moving forward, if you click on Date and then place it on the Rows section, it will now disable it permanently and it will give you a per month view. Or actually, this is going to be per day. Awesome, right? Now, just a reminder, everything we're talking about this one, for example, the application, does not travel with the workbook. So, for example, the one we did earlier for the options on the advanced settings, especially the one that has the grid lines, the settings for the workbook only stays within the workbook. As far as the list on the earlier side, that is going to be retaining on example number one. Remember this one? This only travels on your computer. So if you open your workbook, your Excel, or this file in another place, another household, another area, 
another computer or laptop, this will not work. Take note this will only applicable on your computer settings or user settings. Take note about that one. Now for the next uh, feature here, speaking on the large data set, if you click on dates here, sometimes it's going to be subsection by year. And this is pretty tiresome, especially if you're looking for a specific day, right? So you can avoid this by going to the settings, go on advanced, and look for the one that says uncheck the automatic um, date follows or date filters. So this is going to be for this one. Group dates in auto filter menu. Make sure that this is going to be unchecked. Click OK. And moving forward, that date should now be individually as a day. Easy as that. Now for the next feature, if you select a sample dataset and click on this one, this is going to be a quick analysis. You can check or have these options. For example, you want it to preset in a data bar, color, icon set, and the works. But I love about this one is totals. So under totals, you're going to have running, sum, and then you have percentage running, percentage total. But I'm going to go for sum. Let me just expand this. Perfect. And now if you don't want to see this on your Excel file or Excel um, user interface, click on the settings of course under here under general. Now make sure this option that says show quick analysis option is removed. So whenever I select a data set, that option will not be um, shown anymore. However, I really like that option. So I'm going to bring it back. Awesome feature. Again, guys, if you just select it right there, click analysis, you can now have that one. Easy as that. Now, if the search bar is actually a bit tedious or getting out of the way, click on option right there under general. Make sure you remove that option. You can just really um, collapse it. So if you click on collapse the ribbon automatically, collapse the Microsoft search bar by default, click OK. Now you can search it by this option right here. Now, speaking about other general options here, so we're just going to talk everything under general. There's an option that says when creating new workbooks, you can have an automatic number of sheets when creating. For me, I always go for one, but if you want two, three, or how many, that would be depending on your preference. Of course, guys, you cannot forget about the font size. Every new document can have a font style, font size, or view for your document. Now, some bonus tip for you guys, as promised, if you stay at the latter part of the video. For example, under Boston, you're going to have a, I think the code for this one, that would be 0, 2, 1, 2, 5. But if I click on answer, it will remove the zero. One shortcut for this one, if you add a apostrophe, zero, two, one, two, five, it will read as a text, but that is actually weird looking. So there's an option here. If you go on settings under data, there is going to be a convert under data conversion should be removed leading zeros and convert to a number. Click OK. So whenever I type in zero, two, one, two, five from now, that would be a number, even though I'm going to remove that apostrophe. Again, I'm there is no apostrophe usage, so 02125, click enter, automatically converted as a text. Anyway, that being said, those are the features that I want to share with you. So thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Goodbye for now.